Alright guys, Hatch Crown Mickey again today. I hope you're all doing better and enjoying your day so far. Scump going off on the main stage over the last couple of days, criticizing a fair few players, including Doug Sinter Martin, recently retired from professional play, but also the Seattle Surge. The way they played that series up against the Subletters last weekend has been catching a lot of criticism and for good reason on exactly what's going on in that camp and whether they are completely chalked, especially now that Illy is out of the team and doesn't seem like he might return anytime soon. Very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I'll greatly appreciate it. Firstly, I wanted to show a really interesting article actually for Monster Energy because, you know, they've obviously got the partnerships with Slasher or whatever's going on over there and with the Boston Breach, I guess. So they did an interview here on the Monster Energy website with Slasher and Priester and they discussed all sorts of different things here actually. There are a few highlights that I wanted to mention. Of course, Priester talked about going onto the different roster and those other things. But um, yeah, I thought Slasher's perspective on COD as it stands and like the last year or so is actually pretty interesting. I think the Seed era has been tricked into thinking online COD is real. They've forgotten how different is and how different it's been for me my whole career. I've never been nearly as good online. The game is way different. The gunfights, the way it plays out, it's all different. We do have to play for CDL points online so you do have to do well enough there but on LAN I had a 1.20 KD at last year's major in the World Championship which is true. Like, I mean, I don't know if those numbers are exactly right but Slasher definitely did turn up big time on phase last year at the end of the season but of course they didn't win so um, as he says, I knew from the get-go that if we didn't win champs it was going to be my fault no matter what happened. I think that's, you know, how it's going to be for anyone in that situation. Those guys are never going to break up. Whoever they're for, that if they don't win, they're going to get recycled. So yeah, maybe he realized as soon as they didn't win champs, it was probably over. But of course, he's now on the Boston Breach. But I thought his analysis on players, maybe even such as Snoopy, that don't have experience playing normal Call of Duty, as in the COD games that used to be made back in the day, maybe have an upper hand today, especially online. What are we playing nowadays? There's not a single player who can 100% read the spawns. That's what I've prided myself on for years. There was no getting caught off guard. If I misread something, it was a human error. Not that something just randomly has happened. A lot of the tendencies that us older pros have built in aren't exactly good anymore. Myself and Priester talk about it. You have to be ready for everything. Back in the day, there was no, you know, feeling that you had to be ready for everything. I knew the play I needed to make and I executed it. There were no guessing, you know, now the spawn systems are kind of whack. You have to be cracked. He's uh, pretty funny, really, just saying that you know, basically the map is so chaotic nowadays that you can't rely on actual using your brain. You just have to get cracked and just run around and hope things work out. There obviously is a skill gap and there is team play. I mean, we've seen this with Toronto very clearly, but, um, you know, he talks about it with Snoopy as well, about the fact that he can feel free to criticize those guys and say what he needs to say. But yeah, I just thought some interesting kind of analysis really there from Slasher and kind of the old guard on the way COD is different nowadays and that he feels like some of the newer players have an advantage that they haven't grown up playing at normal COD, so, you know, they can just feel free to get cracked. But maybe if a game goes back to playing more traditionally, which maybe this game does in some respects, but the spawns are still pretty terrible, then it might be a different story. But of course, LAN is a different beast again, and things play different on LAN. They play slower, maybe play a little bit more predictable. That's when Slasher has so far this season, to be fair, on Boston, and he predicts it'll come into his own yet again. But you've got to get there, and this season there's more online than ever, which um, is a trends that's continuing in the CDL because it's cheaper to do so as we full well know. Now a couple of clips to share for you guys. Firstly, Scump and Octane had a bit of a laugh here at the way that Doug played this moment. Now I know Doug was rotating early here but I know that Scump was expecting some sort of trade and Doug to make a certain play but he doesn't. He just flies off into the distance for some reason and um, Doug did give his explanation for this actually but just before I share the clip and said I'm not understanding what's going on. I was just rotating early for B4. He always told me that you know availability is the best of so cool to see that Doug, of course, is still playing. It's still getting involved in the scene. But as I share that clip, I'll also share what the boys had to say on the Seattle surge because it was not pretty last weekend. We'll let him run up at all. Arctan is bad. Doug is getting active. Last guy, last guy. Get him, Doug. Doug ran away. Doug jumped out of the... <laughs> Dude, I love Why him. Where is he going? <laughs> Why did he jump out of the... <laughs> Where is he going? <laughs> Where is he going? <laughs> Oh my, <laughs> that's great. That's actually <laughs> New York, New York versus Seattle. Uh, first time we see the new Seattle team, they obviously dropped Illy for Brezzy. Uh, to me, definitely questionable. But it is what it is. Maybe there's some inside insider things that we don't know about. It shows here. They got 3-0. <laughs> Respectfully. Um... They obviously get his slammed in the high-rise control, and I can only imagine how that went. I didn't get to watch this series, but 
it did not look close. Um, I think you have to get Brezzy a few matches or not to like get used to playing in the pro league again because he used to be in the pro league. I think I'm pretty sure back in the E6 or something like that. Uh, but overall, I just feel like it's so hard because you drop your best player. And there had to be more to it because you don't just randomly drop your best statistically uh, best player unless there's something else going on. And, I, and it, it sucks for that because I think Ender is really, really good at this game. And if there's any other things going on, I, I just hate that for them because they definitely, I feel like the Seattle team definitely needs somebody like Ender. You give up B on this map before you give up A and they just all, they're in quicksand. They, they just stare at themselves and don't move. Dude. I don't even have a rational reason as to why they could have done this. All right, let's count the seconds here. Let's count how long they're on this point. All right, here we go. All right, start start it now. One, One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, six Mississippi, seven Mississippi, eight Mississippi, nine Mississippi, ten Mississippi, eleven Mississippi, twelve Mississippi, thirteen Mississippi, fourteen Mississippi. What the fuck? Sixteen, seventeen. 18. How is that even possible? Where are we, boys? How is that even possible? Where are we? How is that even possible? I have never seen something like it. Personally. So as Kenny says, and of course the scuff and methods go into, I don't know what was going through their heads in this subliner series. And let's not forget, this is a New York team right now that are looking pretty questionable. I know that this series was quite impressive from the subliners and they're still going to be a very good team and difficult to beat to be fair. But you know, it was only a couple of days before they went game five with Ravens, a Ravens team that looked pretty shambolic. I know that I predicted Ravens to win that series and I was pretty damn hyped when they went up 2-0. But still, I mean, Ravens, the mindset on that team, it feels like online they're just kind of chalked. And yet it still took a, a pretty icy to be fair, but it still took a reverse sweep from subliners to win that series. So it's not like they just slammed Ravens a couple of days before and now they've slammed Surge. You know, they slammed Surge more so than they slammed Ravens, which isn't really a great sign given the fact that most people are probably convinced that especially online, Ravens are basically bottom of the barrel, if not right down there. And Surge the series, it wasn't really close to be honest. Maybe they had a chance in a couple of the earlier maps, but this control was just the worst thing that I've ever really seen. And it was the same thing with Scuff and Methods. Like, I just, I mean, look, they explained it better than I could, I suppose, but I just don't understand what's going going on in their heads to make this play. I'm guessing they just lost full or something. They lost the first round and they just decided it was chalk. Because I don't think I've ever seen anything like this even in ranked play. Like, this is what blows my mind. Like, nobody does this in ranked. Nobody gives up A. There's always going to be somebody there. But the fact that Surge just allow them to, to cap A for free... I've never seen anything like it. Scump's never seen anything like it. And, um, you know, we played and watched a lot of COD this year, but... I've not seen anything like this in challenges, in ranked, in, you know, GBs or whatever. It's pretty absurd. So, you know, I, I honestly would put it down to just Surge losing full or being not in a particularly good headspace, which is probably what this comes down to, really. But of course, the question really being, is that actually going to change anytime soon? I mean, Kenny was saying a similar thing, but he was like, what is going on there? We just don't know. And Brezzy had a 0.69 KD his first series, which wasn't great. Of course, the only man positive for them of the season is Illy, who's now got him. We look at the different game modes. Illy, again, only man positive in the respawns, only man positive apart from a booster in the search and destroys, and then only man positive in the controls. So not the greatest sign, is it really, for the team that Brezzy comes in? And to be honest, it's a similar thing, I think, for Nasty to Thieves. Now, I think that Nasty is a better player than Brezzy. I think Nasty can actually be really good again on this game. Hopefully that's the case anyway. And, um, you know, we get to see the potential that he showed on that London team last year. But I think part of the reason why Nasty was brought in was because he pairs well with Afro. They've got the history together that makes sense so um, brezzy in theory should help a booze to be a bit more comfortable which could be a positive thing but when you lose a player as good as illy and as, as kenny says like you lose illy what are you gonna do you're kind of chalked because at that point even from a like a mentality perspective if you're surge how do you really expect to get your head in the game probably when you know that your best player is gone for various reasons that they well either don't have any control of or they don't want to talk about for whatever reason so the numbers aren't pretty 
they've got worse and worse really since the start of the season. And just to have a quick look here, like what's upcoming for these guys. So these are their major two qualifiers. I guess we can look at completed games as well because they started the season not that bad, to be fair. I guess we can't look back that far here, right? But at the start of the season, Serge were looking pretty good. I mean, Ilya had like a 1.7 in his first series he plays and there was uh, lots of optimism around the team. But look, they play Ravens next, which I mean, it's funny really, like both these teams got slammed by subliners. That's a must win. Then they play Ultra, so might as well chalk that one up. Like their stage here is not bad. Like given the stage they could have had, this is one of the most achievable stages for Surge. And I said it yesterday, they're actually sitting, not pretty, but they have like 60 points in the CDL standings. So they can make champs. Like the way they're playing right now, they won't make it because they'll just lose every single series. But if they do start to win something, then they can theoretically still make champs because they have a bit of, and like they're 40 points ahead of Thieves, for example, which is quite a big gap for Thieves to overturn. And the Thieves have a shockingly difficult stage compared to Surge, but okay, let's say they beat Ravens, they lose to Ultra, you know, they can definitely beat Gorillas, then it's Rocker, which, you know, good team, but still you've got to feel that they're beatable. Legion and then Breach, I mean, it's one of the best stages you could possibly get, really, if you're Surge. I know they've played Subliners and they're going to play Ultra, but apart from that, it's definitely very doable. It's just whether they have the headspace. That's kind of what I think it comes down to here. It's like whether they actually believe that anything is possible here because we know that this has been the case with RCTs last year you know, people basically said that it gave up right in the middle of the season. And I don't know if that's true because we don't know what happened behind the scenes, but there's probably evidence to point towards it. And even the series they lost to the subliners the other day, if you look at the face cams after the series, Arstiz was, you know, head down, not looking happy. And maybe it's an expected outcome when you lose in that manner. But I think like Rambo's going to have to work miracles personally to make that team believe that they actually can be a good team because, you know, they still might be a change or two away from even having some belief because I think that's a big part of it, right? If you guys don't think as a team you can achieve anything, then you might as well just chalk it up now. And that might be where they are, quite frankly. So I thought this is interesting as well from Zuma. He put together his best roster outside of the top four teams because we know full well that the top four teams basically have all of the talent. There's only a couple of players that I think are top 16 players that are outside of those four teams. And Linz, I think, is probably one of them. I'm quite surprised that Slasher isn't here. I know that Attach, I mean, obviously his boys with Attach and everything, but I think I would definitely have put Slasher on here personally. Or at least I think he should have been involved here somewhere. But to be fair, I think realistically speaking, he's done a reasonable job of putting this team together because it's tough, you know. We talk about it a lot with our Thieves and Surge and these other teams. They like to make changes. They should try and make it to the next level. But realistically even making it to a championship Sunday with the way the league is currently set out is a pretty reasonable achievement. So he's gone for Linz and Gwyn SMG Duo, which I think is, I mean, look, given the players right now, you've got to say fair play. Looking at the Rookie of the Year candidates, Linz and Gwyn right up there. I think there's a world in which Snoopy could work as well in this case, given time, but I think there's still some questions about him as a player. But yeah, Linz and a Boozer makes just too much sense. I don't know why they weren't a duo somewhere to start the season, to be honest. And then I guess you've got to choose a main AR and then attach might be the man for the job. So I think a yeah, pretty reasonable team here that, that uh, Zuma puts together. And you know, where would this team be? You form this team now. I think they might be in that kind of top six range, to be honest, but maybe still a little bit away from trying to get to the next level. But very much interested your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care. And I'll see you next time. Tactical Rab needs a fucking tweak. Tell Tactical Rab to fucking suck on these fucking nuts and put him in his fucking mouth and a fucking, fucking, fucking go fuck himself. So